navigate through this game that at one time wasn't fair for everybody. You couldn't get into certain tournaments if your skin was a certain color. And in 1968, even though we have this amazing tournament taking place, we have chaos in our society. We're landing men on the moon in 1969, but our, our country's being ripped apart. And Johnny Ash makes a decision to take a second tour of duty in the battle zone in Vietnam so his brother, Arthur, could continue his tennis career. Because Arthur was in the Army when he won here in 68. He was a lieutenant. And Donald Dell talked about the $14,000 check that uh, Tom Ocker won. Arthur only got a $26 stipend, basically his army's um, stipend for a day's wage, 26 bucks. They play for $3.7 million in his stadium, 22,000 seats. We've come so far. But think of the sacrifice from Johnny Ash so his brother could carry on the message. This great game. Let's hear it from Johnny Ash, everybody. I would like to thank all of you all for being here tonight um, because I know you didn't come to see me but I'd like to thank all of you for keeping the history alive of this hollowed ground you would be surprised how little today's players know about this place and the difference this place made to tennis. Now, Donald's gone. Donald was the change merchant and change agent for tennis in America. Okay? And a lot of people don't give him the credit for that. All right? But he was, in fact, the change agent. Now, if you remember correctly, Donald knew the Kennedy brothers. Okay, and the Kennedy brothers knew everybody else. <laughs> so when Donald had the Davis Cup team and Arthur won in 68, a lot of people made telephone calls. And things started to happen in tennis. Not only did the game change, but I think I'm pretty sure that the ATP was the very first player union, professional player union, I'm pretty sure, okay? That changed. Athletes had a voice, finally. 1968 was a year for us to remember for more than just tennis. A lot of things happened. And those individuals who were serious about life made transitions. This gave Arthur the opportunity, 1968 the US Open gave Arthur the opportunity to transit, to transition from athlete to citizen of the world. I talked to him about two hours after he finished playing. He said, I did it. I said, yeah, bro. He said, I'm a champion now. And he said, people will listen to me. Now, people wondered why, because those of that era, and she will tell you, Arthur was the most talented player out there. But he couldn't stand clay. Just like <laughs> they were thrashers. Like well, well, that's it. Like Not interested in five and six strokes. Not in, no, no, let's get it over, done in two or three, and let's move on, okay? So he, he would never do anything on clay, which was fine, because tennis was simply a vehicle to him. It was simply a step that he took because of the other things that he wanted to do. Now, a lot of people don't think about tennis as a vehicle. 
But look at the number of kids who've gone to college because of the tennis racket. We now have over 200,000 kids playing National Junior Tennis League. Think about that. 200,000, over 200,000 kids playing. Okay, and a lot of that was because of Donald Dell and Arthur Ashe. Okay, they were the change agents. I would like to congratulate and thank the West Side Tennis Club Board and all who support this club. The history here is worth us knowing and keeping. Today's American players have been introduced to the sport because of the size of the prize checks. Let's face it, that's what most of them are about. Okay, now shake your head because you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> okay, that's what interests them, all right? But very, very few of them have any idea about the sacrifices made by the players. Virginia talked about one situation. I'm going to give you another one, and I'm going to sit down. I was 13 years old, Richmond, Virginia. Daddy and I went to Salisbury, Maryland to pick up a canvas tennis court. Brought it back to the Richmond Arena. Okay. The pros were playing. I was in the locker room. When the pros had finished, I watched the winner of the tournament sign the check, the promoter cash it, and then the winner of the tournament pass it around so the rest of the guys could get to the next tournament. And she talked about the love of the game. Things have changed. Things have changed. But in a lot of ways, people haven't. And that's where we come in. We have to ensure that no matter what the circumstances, the love of American tennis incorporates what happened here and the history of this place. Okay? Now, think about it. The only reason the USTA, which was the USLTA in the old days, some of you all remember that. Okay? The only reason this is, it's, in existence is because what this club was able to do for it. Think about it. They wouldn't be what they are today if they didn't have the opportunity to start something and build it here. We should all remember that and we should ensure that those who come behind us remember that. Because this is truly hollowed ground. Thank you.